Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Talk with TQ. I'm in the Screaming Woman studio in Main Street, and I'm really happy that I can talk to a really important artist from Washington, D.C. I've been trolling him since, ooh, 2016 when I first noticed him on LinkedIn, and I saw a piece he did of the late, great Freddie Mercury. So I said, wow, look, at he, he really captured his likeness. And where did this artist come from? And from then on, I started sort of watching him, watching his artwork. And finally, tonight, I have him on Talk With TQ to introduce him to you. His name is Patrick T. Smith. He's an artist out of Washington, D.C. He does portrait art. And the way I see it, a lot of his work is social commentary. So I will welcome him to the show. Welcome to the show, Patrick. Thank you so Thank much you. for agreeing to be on. Thank you. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing okay. You know, just my usual self. <laughs> That's a joke to anybody who knows me. They're laughing right now. But anyway, it's more about you tonight. Now, I am so... I have been so impressed with your work literally since 2016. Thank I went you. back to the first time I approached you in 2016. It was in August. So when did you start doing such beautiful art? You're a natural at this. When did you begin? Maybe seven or eight. I just didn't know what I was doing. It's just that like my, my grandmother and my uh, grandfather were artists. And uh, like my grandma used to work for like the government printing office. And she used to do like uh calligraphy by hand but she was also a hairdresser so what she would do was um would sketch people and ask them what hair design did they want and she would just sketch them with the hair design and she said is this how you want to look and he said yeah so she would just do the design and my grandfather used to do all paintings so i kind of like inherited the ability and it's just that to me it was just something i could do and I really didn't like hone in on it or whatever. It's just that whenever I seen somebody, I just always like draw it. And then like um, I went to the school in uh, Southwest DC. I was in like the uh, sixth or seventh grade and I had a teacher named Miss Poinsettia. And uh, she asked me to, um, she actually put a picture. It was like an outlining of uh, George Washington and I sketched the outline, and then she thought I traced it. And they was like, nah, he drew it. So she put something else down, and I drew that. And she put something else down, and I drew that. And she looked at me. She said, I got to keep my eye on you. <laughs> and, and that was like in the 70s or whatever, like early 80s, 70s, 80s, whatever. And, um, you know, she followed me. And then, like, funny thing, I ended up having a crush on her or whatever. So my thing was... If she's going to be nice to me, I, I would keep my grades up and I would stay with my artwork. So I kind of would always, whenever she came around, I would always try to make the drawings look real good or whatever. So she married this guy named Harry Carson from the New York Giants. And I, I remember he came to our school and I seen him and I looked at him. I wasn't that impressed. I was like, my dad's bigger than him. And, you know, I, <laughs> so, you know, but... Like, she followed me through school, and, like, after I left there, my mom and my dad separated. So my mom moved to Southeast D.C., and I ended up going to this school called um, Kramer. And she followed me. Like, before I went to Kramer, I went to Moton. I was in art class. And it was strange because I was always kind of like, as they would say, quote, unquote, you're the best artist in your class. But it was another kid named Robert Gossett. Him and I end up going later on to Duke Ellington together. But um, she arranged for me to have been uh, go to Kramer, had an art teacher named Mr. Hart. And her and Mr. Hart arranged for me to have an audition at Duke Ellington School of the Arts. And I went there. And the little stuff that I was sketched during the summer, they seen it. And the guy was like, can you paint? And I was like, paint. I'm like, I had seen my grandmother and I'd seen my grandfather paint. And I didn't know nothing about paint. I just knew how to draw. So the guy gave me a watercolor set, a little basic watercolor set. And I looked at it. I was like, the heck is this? And he's like, well, look, this is how you watercolor. Dip the brush in some water. 
that can't. So I was like, <laughs> all right, seems simple enough. So took that home. I said, well, what can I paint? And my mom used to get like the Jet magazines or whatever. So I sketched Michael Jackson. And I was like, I don't know how to paint. I was like, okay. I dipped the brush into him in the water and put it on in a watercolor. And I was like, okay. So I just was trying to match the colors up. So I said, okay. Yeah. And my, my mom thing was she she really didn't like push me because my mom was like a single parent. She had me when she was young. So it was kind of, it was basically up to me to really push myself during that time. It was up to me to push myself. So my watercolor paintings look like oil paintings because I really didn't know how to manipulate the medium. I was just piling paint on top of paint, trying to create the tones and textures. So I took it back and the guy was looking at it like, that's watercolor. I was like, yeah. So I got in. And about that time, when I got into Duke Ellington, I just thought when we, when I got there, I just thought, okay, it's all day art. That's what I thought. Ended up, we had art history, photography, sculpture, 2D concepts, which was design and, and drawing one, two, three, sculpture, painting one, two, three. I was like, man, science, English, social studies. Our history, hold on, what's all this stuff? But you know, I stuck it out, and and you know, then 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 my athletic ability started to like blossom, and I was like, ah, you know, then then you get in school, and it's people who have just as much talent in art as you do. So I'm like, coming from the inner city, I was like, maybe I should just go play basketball. I'm like, I'm just as good at that as I am at art. So my grandma was like, well, what happens if you break your leg? And I was like, well, you know, a lot of the public schools was like, well, I can come play basketball. Now I had to do number three classes, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and she's like, nah, I go to art school. So that was the best thing I ever did because during the time I came up, during the 80s or quote unquote DC, the crack years or the genocide time in GC, because that's all it was, was genocide. Um, it, 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 it broadened my horizons or my, you know, my, my it, it just opened me up because, like, I, did, I didn't know outside of DC, I didn't know that there were white people, Hispanic people. I didn't know about jazz. I didn't know about rock. I didn't know about modern dance and theater. I didn't know about figure drawings, contour drawings, and, and all this other stuff, photography, f-stops, photo lenses, sculpture, clay, and all of this other stuff. So it, it, when, when I would go back to my neighborhood, I was like, I wasn't interested in everything everybody else was doing. I, I wanted to concentrate on my artwork. So after I left the Duke Ellington, I went to West Virginia State, I got the chance to play basketball because when I was at Duke Ellington, my, my phys ed teacher noticed that I was athletically gifted. And he was like, well, can't let you waste that. But later on, I moved to Philadelphia, got married, had kids, still played ball. But like when my mom died, I moved back home. And, you know, I just... I, I really like dove into my artwork then, you know, I, and I was like, she never like really got the chance to see where my artwork went. My dad died during the time I was in Philly. He never really got to see where my artwork went. And, you know, it's like, I was quote unquote, the black sheep in my family, like the nerd. Oh, all he do is draw. He a bookworm. Anything technology, we had ask him. So it's like nobody really got to see me do my artwork. All they knew was, yeah, my nephew could play ball and he's a nerd. So now that I'm an artist, it's like, yeah, my nephew's an artist or whatever. But it's like throughout life, it's, it's just been me that had to push for my artwork. So growing up, my grandma had pictures of Martin Luther King 
or my one of my uncles was into Islam. Then I had another uncle who was in the military, but you know, my family did what they wanted to do, but my uncle that was in the military, he taught me martial arts and his thing was, you never call another black man a nigga. We don't use the N word. You're stronger than that. Mm -hmm. So in my art, I always try to relay some of our story or some type of social message in it. And as, as a black artist, a lot of times I get asked, is that all you paint? And I'm like, no, I, I, I can paint anything, but it's like certain, certain figures to me, I paint a lot on emotion, like you said with Freddie Mercury. That was a beautiful piece, and that's what caught caught my attention with you. That's because that's the first thing I saw that you had done. Right. It's, I, just, I don't know why it turned up on my screen, but it just on LinkedIn it did. And um, I have to say that you cut the likeness was like just like spot on. And then I started watching your work. Now you've evolved a bit in that I've noticed you've started adding more color to your work, but. You've also made a couple of changes here and there and a couple of major accomplishments I'll, I'll share with my audience is that you have a piece that's currently exhibiting in Italy of Mother Teresa. Yeah, it's yeah, the, the, like, like, the, like what you said, the, the evolving of it is that it, it's funny. A guy named, we were doing an exhibit in, in Capitol Hill. And like what I used to do is like, what I did with this piece right here, if you can see. Yeah. The, uh, so like what I, what I would normally do is just paint the piece and leave the background white. And um, it was a guy, fellow artist named Mike Boone. And we were exhibiting at uh, Capitol Hill. And he said, man, your work is incredible. Why don't you ever put anything in the background? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. <laughs> so, one day I said, well, okay, let me put something in the background. So I put something in the background. And then one of the curators say, you know, your artwork looks like Jacob Lawrence. And I was like, but I'm not Jacob Lawrence. And which he's he's one of the people that I, I like. And but it's like over the years, you know, my grandma said, you know, my grandma's like my best critic. She's 91 now. And she'll still critique my artwork. And she said, I like it, but it's not you. And I'm like, what do you mean? She said, put more of you in your artwork. She said, it's okay to paint what you see, but you got to put you in it. So now, what, I, what I figured out was I had to put more of myself in my artwork, create my own style. So the evolution, as you say, is... It's, it's just more of me in it where I just kind of like, it's going to sound crazy, but I kind of like look, when I look at a subject, I kind of talk to it. I just be like, okay, well, look, I'm going to paint you, but I need you to guide me while I'm painting you. Okay. So if you guide me, then I'll just paint what you say to paint. So that's usually what comes out, whatever I'm being guided to paint. You kind of go on a vibration of the energy that you get from the subject. That's that's how I paint. There's a lot of emotion in it, you know. Your your a lot of your work I've seen. Some of it is very emotional, like like screaming emotional. And there are things that you do that are very subtle. Um, where where can people actually find a sample of your work? Because you have an, a specific site. I know you're on Instagram, and you're on Facebook, and you're on LinkedIn. Like right now, my like I said, I like to be prolific. My website is being redone because for a little while I was doing so much stuff and then it's like you got to take stuff down and put stuff up so I'm having it redone and a lot of a lot of like the piece that uh you were talking about that was in Italy it's, it's Mother funny. Teresa yeah the mother it's that's over there the Mother Teresa is that's that's this one here yes Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny because before I put the background in, I was just going to leave it blank. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, I can't do that. But, um, like, like you said, on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, uh, 
what's it, American artist. I just like if you just Google me, I just pop up all over the place. It would be Patrick T. Yes. 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 Don't forget the T. And a lot of it is because we, there are a lot of Patrick Smiths on the on the planet that I know. What does the T stand for? I'm curious. I don't even, I don't like my middle name. Okay. <laughs> what is this Patrick Terrence Smith? I don't even like it. Terrence, that's a beautiful name. And yeah. just thank you. Someone dreamed it up and saw you as that. So Patrick T. Smith. Yeah. All right. So I want just that to be etched in people's minds, not to be confused with any other Patrick T. Patrick Smith with yeah, all due respect to the around. others. There's a lot of us floating around. Yes, but there's <laughs> only one Patrick T. Yeah. You know? So I'm I'm very impressed with you. I know when we spoke briefly yesterday, um, you told me that you were into things like, which surprised me, um, animal husbandry. Yeah, it uh like really? Tell me like, about that. Uh, like I went to school for um for art, like so. When I went to Duke Ellington, we it, it wasn't like a regular high school, so they yeah. was training us like we were college students, mm-hmm. right? So when we left there, and I went to West Virginia State, and I presented my portfolio, and the professors looked at it, and they were kind of like, "It just be like a refresher course." So have you thought about advertising or design or printing technology? And I was like, printing. I was like, my grandmother worked at the government printing office. So if I take up printing, when I leave college, I can go get a job printing, right? So <laughs> I took up printing technology. And the one of the great things about that was my uh, two professors were former Black Panthers. Oh, really? So, so when I got there, Fred Mixer and um, Kathy Bradford, Fred Mixer said, you know what? I'm, we, we're not going to touch the books. He said, I'm going to teach you like my father taught me. He said, first, you're going to learn how to take this press apart. Then you're going to learn how to put it back together. And once you learn how to put it back together, he said, I'm not worried about the the, the chemistry of it. He said, because you already had photography. So you know how to burn a plate and you know how to take, you know, operate the document equipment. So I learned how to take it apart, put it back together, learn how to operate all the presses and then. The, the chemistry of operating, you know, a press where water and ink don't mix and all of that. So that was cool. And I did that and left. I, it was supposed to take four years. I did it in two years. Got out early. Uh, stayed in Philly for like nine years. Got married. Had the opportunity to try out for the NBDL the, back then. Made the team play for a little while. Um, during the time I was in Philly, like my mom died. And my mom died of AIDS, so oh, how that, that that, that kind of like took a little out of me. And I was like, man, I was like, I tell you, I'll, I'll go back to school and study medicine or whatever. So I went back to school and I was going to become a pharmacist until I looked at the student loans and I was like, oh, no, nah, I don't do that. <laughs> but uh, I, I got my uh, certification as a pharmacy technician and I, I moved back home to DC because the marriage didn't work or whatever, but I was working as a pharmacy technician. And uh, one day a customer came in and lays like, you're wasting your time here. You're so good with people. Um, my brother is a, a, a vet, a veterinarian. Uh, we need somebody. And why don't you come work with us? What are they paying you here? We'll pay you $25 an hour. I was like, bye. <laughs> bye. So, you know, I ended up doing that. Then another Client came in and was like, uh, look, I'm a supervisor out of John Hopkins. You ever done any house with you? I was like, no, you'd be perfect for us. And what are they paying you? And blah, blah, blah. And they offered me more money. And that's how I ended up working in animal husbandry. And, you know, it's, it's cool working with animals. And the research part of it was interesting. And I already had the, the, the pharmaceutical background and some of the medical background and understood the anatomy and all of that. And, so, you know, it, it was cool, you know, and, you know, I, I'd always just, I liked animals because we grew up with rabbits, frogs, and everything else, and, you know, so that was cool, you know. Imagine you do beautiful um, animal portraits, I can imagine. Yeah, I've, I've done a couple, you know, I, I've done a couple, um, a neighbor of my grandmother's asked me to do a portrait of her dog, and um, I did that. 
And it's like, it, it's, it's funny that like when we were in art school, we painted everything. And a lady, it's funny, a lady in uh, California reached out to me on oh, Facebook. She said, hey, do you have any problems painting nudes? And I'm like, nah, I'm like, when we were in art school, we had like live nude models. And it's like, I tell people now, after art school, you look at people differently. Because you get to talk to the, the, the models. So it makes you look at people differently. Now, when you look at people, you no longer see the shell because it's like you're more interested in the conversation and what goes on here. So even, even like in relationships, it's like if there's nothing here or in the soul, then everything else is like empty clay. You know, the, 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 whatever is molded, if there's nothing in there, then there's nothing to communicate with. It's like a blank canvas. If whatever you mold, if it doesn't have a, a soul to it or any emotion to it, it's just, it's just some paint and somebody just threw something on canvas. You know, that's why I, I don't like for people to ask me, well, what do you think of such and such artwork? It's like if I look at some Picasso or Van Gogh work, I'm like, I'm bored. <laughs> like, it doesn't really do anything to me. Then I'll see something that, like, I used every now and then, like up in Maryland, they would ask me to come volunteer and teach little kids. And, like, once you introduce little kids to color and some of the stuff they do, and I'm looking at them like, and I go tell the parents, like, Get them in art school. Why? And I'm like, you don't understand. Get them in art school. Give them a year or two. You'll understand. I think it's remarkable that your grandmother encouraged you to continue with your art, even though you seem to be brilliant at a lot of different things. But she saw who you really were. And also, I find it interesting in terms of genetics that um, was it your, your father did calligraphy? No, my, my grandmother actually... My grandmother did calli calligraphy. I find that really very interesting. Did she teach you any of that? Oh, my God. She used to, you, you remember the green, the green paper with the lines in it? The, the handwriting paper? She used yeah. to be like, that's not a capital P. That's not how you make a small A. And it's like, when I sign my name to my artwork now, if she's not around, I just... And, and like, <laughs> if I show her some artwork, I make sure I cover up my signature and just be like, here it is, you know, but. Well, it's a very important form of communication, handwriting. Yeah, like if, if, if I'm writing something, I'll make sure that, you know, my writing is legible, you know. So do you feel that a lot of the talent that you have is, ge is really because it's genetic? I mean, you've actually studied. Because you, you did go the, to the Duke Ellington School of... But it's, it, 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 it's, it's funny because, like, when... I, I think because it was genetic, genetically passed down, when I, I, I'll, I'll be the first to say, when I was in art school, I didn't apply myself as much as I should have because I was torn between being an athlete and an artist. It wasn't until, like, when I was in Philly and I, and I went through the traumatic thing of being, being a, a, a young father and being torn away from my family, the only thing I had to console me was my art. So I had to fall in love with my art. That was the only thing I had to console me because I didn't have my mother or my father to console me or anybody like family members or brothers and sisters. Like I had two sisters, but they're not in my age group. And because of the way they grew up, they, their, their attitudes were like, I don't, I don't care. You don't need her. You don't need her. So mm -hmm. the only thing I had to console me was my art. So that's what my concentration was. That was my sanctuary. That's where I escaped to my art. So in those years where, quote unquote, I was heartbroken, I concentrated in my art and it, a lot of it 
reflected in, in your brush strokes and the colors you chose and in and, and the, and the lines or, or what you put into the eyes or how you structure the nose and the mouth and what you put in the background. So that's even today, like, like now I'm engaged. So now when I paint something, it's a little softer. <laughs> or, or, you know, like when you and I were talking the other day, like with the concussion thing, yeah. I tried to paint something and I couldn't paint. And it was like, <laughs> and I'm like, I don't even do abstract work. And I was like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> now you I, do. <laughs> now I do, you know. But, you know, it's, 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 it's a journey, you know, and just, it's, it's a journey. You know, and, and the thing is, you got you to gotta stay true to being an artist. I, like a lot of young people I talk to, I'm like, you you, you got to stay true to this utensil because yeah. it's an extension of you, you know. And it's like, it's many a day I walk past it and it's like, it's a vibration. It's like, Pick me up, Patrick. <laughs> oh, pick me up, you know. You have to go pick it up, you know. And, and it's like I always carry a sharpie or a pencil around. Like it was times I go to a restaurant, got a sharpie, and I'll see somebody. Oh, they look interesting. I'll grab a napkin, and they'll be look. They don't looking at me, and I'm looking at them. I will sketch them real quick. And I'll be like, here, take that, and they'll be like, get out. You drew me that quick. God, can I get your information? Can you paint my family? Yeah, sure, dude. Like, you know, and they'll be like, well, how long will it take me? I'm like, just send me a clear photograph. Man, like, seriously, dude? Like, yeah, man, just send me a clear photograph. And then then, then next thing you know, somebody else will look over, like, he did that. You're like, God, can you draw me? And I'm like, this stand still. Here we go. God, God, hold up, bro. And I'm like, next thing you know, I got like 10 customers. So you made yourself famous. You made yourself famous. So let me ask you this question. How can someone pick up a piece of your art? What if someone wants to buy a piece Uh, of your art or commission you for a piece of art? um, Like, uh, what's your best contact? uh, If you go to Facebook, you can just inbox me or Instagram. You can inbox me until my website is back up. But Mm -hmm. Facebook, inbox me, Instagram, inbox me, Twitter, inbox me, LinkedIn, inbox me, or Patrick Smith 578 at Gmail. 578 sounds like a birthday to me at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, it, just, it, I'm just guessing. Yeah. So Patrick it's, Smith 578, 578 at, gmail. at gmail.com. And there we have it. Thank you so much, Patrick, for coming on the show. Thank you. We're gonna, I'm going to have you back because I'm not done asking questions. I have more Anytime. questions for you. Anytime. Okay, I'm going to hold you to it. And till the next time, I'm going to say goodnight to the audience. Thank you for coming to this episode of Talk with TQ. And definitely look up Patrick Smith. Patrick T. Smith. Look at Patrick Smith on LinkedIn.com and on Facebook.com and on Instagram. You'll be really glad that you visited. He's the most extraordinary artist I've spoken to in a very, very long time. Thank, pa- thanks, Patrick. It was it was worth the time. I waited. I waited. I stalked and I pounced. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Patrick. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.